Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about assertions in Cypress. So just ways of checking that things are appearing the way that they should appear or behaving the way that they are expected to behave. So the learning goals for this video are to identify and use common Cypress assertions, and then also understanding when assertions happen by default. So uh, like we've seen in, in previous topics, Cypress handles a lot of things kind of behind the scenes by default. And uh, this is also true with assertions where some assertions just kind of happen out of the box based on the action that you're taking. So let's go ahead and dive in. Before we dive into the actual code, I wanted to point out this assertions page on Cypress's documentation section of their website. You might see some familiar looking um, ways of writing tests from other libraries like Chai. All of this stuff is built in to Cypress, which is super helpful if you're familiar with these other testing libraries. You'll see the some familiar looking syntax, as well as a list of common assertions and use cases for those assertions, how to write negative assertions. So lots of really good examples here, and I encourage you to take a look at this documentation page whenever you get a chance. So diving into our code, we have our last uh, test that we wrote. We can go ahead and comment this out. And we are once again going to use the, uh, the actions page. So we can take a look at this navigation menu. And we can see here that on the actions page, we want the class of active to be applied to this actions link. And presumably the purpose for that is to show you that you are on the actions page and maybe it'll be a different color or be bold or something like that. So what we'll do is we'll grab this drop down menu uh, unordered list, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And then we'll grab the third list item, and we'll make sure that it has this active class. So let's go ahead and do that. We can say that it shows an active class for the current pages uh, for the uh, we can say current page. And then we can cy.visit slash command slash actions. And then we can do cy.get that drop down menu. And within that drop down menu, we can find a list item. And rather than finding all of them, we'll grab the, the third one which equals an index of two. And we can say should have dot class active. So we're grabbing that drop down menu unordered list. We're finding a list item with an index of two. And we're asserting that it has a class of active. Remember, I've got this project running locally. I'm, I've run the CY open command, and now we can run our test in the window. And it looks like we wrote this incorrectly, so let's take a look. Drop down menu, I forgot to put the period to, to indicate that this is a class, so let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Cool. So we visited it, we found that uh, that unordered list with a class of drop down menu. We found our list items that uh, in this case equaled an index of two and we expected list item dot active to have class active, which it does. We can also write negative assertions. So presumably if we have one list item that shows the, uh, the active class on the active page, all of the other links should not have that active class. So let's take a look at how we write that. So we can write a, a, another test that says it should not have an active class on inactive pages. So we'll see why dot visit slash command slash actions. We will get our drop down menu. We'll find the 
we'll say the first list item, really any other uh, list item would be fine aside from that third one. And we'll say dot should not have class of active. So now if we flip back over to our test runner, we can restart it should not have an active class. Perfect. We can also chain on commands. So we can make multiple assertions. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So if we have our cy.get, um, we can chain on to this. So we found our list item first should and then we can, uh, we can add on a dot find. And within that we can find our anchor tag. And we can say something like should have attribute href. And then it should have a link and we can take a look. Uh, command slash querying. So this is that first one we want to make sure that it has command slash querying. Perfect. So we visited, we found our drop down menu, we expected it not to have a class of active, which passed. And then within that list item, we found the anchor tag that was nested within the list item. And we expected that anchor tag to have an attribute uh, of href with the value of command slash querying, which it did. So just taking a look back and let me clean this up a little bit. So I'll drop the dot should and the dot find, and then the other dot should, just to make it a little bit more readable. So how, how I wrote this, we have our drop down menu, we found the first one, and we asserted that this list item didn't have a class of active, which passed. After that passed, we chained on a, another dot find. So since we were still referencing this list item, we found the anchor tag within it, and we asserted that it had an attribute of href, which was equal to this commands slash querying. And so that all passed, which is great. So some things to keep in mind. So we, we saw a couple of ways of, of writing assertions. Um, a lot of these other kind of built in uh, commands in Cypress, like visit or click or type or things like that, have built in assertions. So you don't have to check to see if something exists for an exit for example so we had earlier in, an, in a previous test we had um this find by placeholder text email dot type test at email.com notice that we didn't have to write an assertion that said cy dot find by placeholder text email dot should exist dot type these types of commands behind the scenes are going to make sure that these things exist or can be accessed or are somewhere on the page before running the the type or the visit or the click. Um, and so just keeping in mind that, uh, again, Cypress handles a lot of these things out of the box for you and takes away some of, uh, some of that extra thinking that you might otherwise have to do. And so speaking of some of those actions that are taken that you don't have to think about asserting their existence, in the next video, we're going to take a look at some more common use cases of UI interaction, like clicking, double clicking, typing, clearing, checking, unchecking, things like that. Until next time, feel free to check out our blog and community pages for more information on writing tests and good tips and tricks for making sure that your websites and applications are running well and that your users are having a great experience as well as other ways to get certified and bolster your skill set as a Cypress tester. So as always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.